Now, our next movie is not in the same league. It's Murder by Decree, yet another Sherlock Holmes film. Why so many Sherlock Holmes films? Well, as the cost of making films gets higher and higher, film companies seem to be playing it safer and safer with remakes, sequels, tried and true subjects like Sherlock Holmes and Dracula, films that don't take many risks, films that don't take any risks. Murder by Decree is a quite violent film. In fact, it's so bloody, I think it should really be rated R instead of PG. In that picture, Christopher Plummer plays Sherlock Holmes. Late in the film, he confronts England's prime minister, played by John Gilgood, with evidence that a series of killings of low-rent prostitutes leads right up to the throne of England for its prime suspect. You accuse. But it is proof we need, Mr. Holmes. You've heard this tragic story now. But what is your link with any crook? Where is your proof? You have no proof. Only surmise. Wild conjecture. I have proof. I have proof that a woman was cynically taken in marriage. I have proof of the husband's name, that a child was born. I have proof that the woman was committed to an asylum by order of that same spivey. I have proof of evidence suppressed by you, Sir Charles. Evidence which seemed to accuse a member of the sacred order to which you all belong. What should I tell the Queen? You surely don't suggest that Her Majesty is in any way involved. I cannot easily believe that. You have my word. I would prefer some more reliable authority. In the circumstances, I shall ignore your offensive attitude. If I seem to be offensive, Prime Minister, you may take it I am offended. You offend me. Shall I resign? Would that satisfy you? Yes, resign. And there we see really the film's biggest problem. At a crucial point, its ending, Murder by Decree, is much too talky. That speech goes on for at least another five minutes. <laughs> it ends up ruining what could have been a fine picture. It does have some good performances. Christopher Plummer is a good Holmes. James Mason is excellent as Dr. Watson. But the film's long, talky passages really obliterate all the thrills. You know, Gene, you're right. I was thinking there can't have ever been that many thrillers that suddenly, at the end of an hour and a half of action and so <laughs> forth, stabbings and burnings, and you're right, it's very violent, suddenly we get, you said five minutes, I'd say at least ten minutes of inexplicable mm. dialogue. They recapitulate what happens. Holmes speculates about the meaning <laughs> of it all. It's not elementary at all this time to Holmes. The audience sits there, they're stunned. It's going on and on. What did they do? Tune into a radio play? Yeah, well, you've devastated this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm amazed, I guess, uh, that it does build up like that and then really come to a halt. Do you think it should have been R-rated? I did. I Perhaps so, yeah. It's a pretty bloody picture for a PG. It's not a family Sherlock Holmes yeah, movie. Yeah, I would not sure. take uh, my kids to the film. And in fact, I wish I didn't have to go myself. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but you did. Yeah. I also agree that Murder by Decree, the Sherlock Holmes film, is much too talky when it should be thrilling. Two no's for that. We can't recommend you see it.